cheers and good on you. Why aren't you listening to Brothers Just Searching? Why? You're about to embark on a journey through the written word of God on subjects that deal with the day. This is Brothers Just Searching. How you doing, everyone? Welcome to this episode of Brothers Just Searching, where we talk about God's Word and current world events to educate and to edify the believers of Jesus Christ. I'm Isaac Hayes. Alongside of me, Aubrey Box, hello, Anthony Hayes, and Bowen Roban. Guys, what's happening? Oh, good, 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 good. We Y'all had to keep Bowen weather. and Boogie the same way, but me and Aubrey thought it'd be pretty nice to, to make go into the L shape. Yeah, yeah you know, we, you we're know. moving with the spirit. Yeah. We're moving with this. They don't have to look at me, see? They can look uh-huh. the other way. Uh-huh. That's how it was. I can look at the wall. Uh-huh. I can look at they, the They don't want to look at this ugly face. Now I'm bald head. I'm uh-huh. even uglier. I know. You, I know. I want to tell you, There's you no are way. shining amongst all of us right now. That's right. Hey, check out my head. Look, look. That tank pretty, ain't it? Lord, look at that. Lloyd's zooming up the camera, too. Lloyd, we do not want to scare the people on Rumble and on YouTube. What are you doing? Hey, if they don't want to watch a horror movie, they can just go rent one. Hey, hey, the beauty of a clean scalp and no hair. Y'all need to admire it. Well, no, hey, it's, hey, as, hey, as, as polished as his study life. <laughs> hey, talking uh, about that. Talking about it. Bowen told us he's been reading a lot, Aubrey. Is that true? Oh, what you should see the amount of books that he had. Yeah, he, his hey, eyeballs are coming out like listen, this. Huh? Listen, he had no room left on the table. No room. It was just books and books and books and books and books. And I said, no, no, we, we got to do something about that. I gave him a storage container so he could put them away. Hey, 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 listen, if he had hair, it would be like Einstein. Be all sticking up and glasses be looking like this. Oh he, he would be, the be like that. And the hair sticking up and this. Study. You know that knowledge. Yeah, study Professor Bowen. Uh, hey, I like to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, like. hey, you know, you know when the the king, uh, when the Apostle Paul went to uh, uh, to uh, one of uh, Philip, uh, um, uh, the king of um, Agrippa, Agrippa, and he says, uh, he says, uh, he said, Paul, your knowledge made you mad. <laughs> That's gonna happen to you. Yeah. That's Bowen. Bowen's mad. <laughs> Bowen was mad before he got the knowledge. <laughs> I don't know how he does it because he's reading books that college kids would, yeah. would have a difficult see, time with. I told you, I told you, you see? Mm-hmm. Hey, I he's, back up. he's reading systematic theology and Christian ethics at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So I'm, I'm thinking he's got he's got his work cut out for him. <laughs> Hey, 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 this, 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 the title. Not, not counting all the other books I read with that. Yeah, and that's just the, the two he added to his, uh. To, to the collection. To his collection. And see, that, that's the thing about me. I'm reading a, a book right now by Solomon Norman. I was saying, and I'm, I, yeah, have, but, I have uh, him in a, be, I'm going to be interviewing him in a couple of weeks on the Cajun Conservative Show. Sweet. And, uh. I got his book. I'm trying to read it. I can only read one book at a time. Hey, so, Bowen hey, reading like I read five one. of them. No, I'm reading seven just, or eight. Yeah, see, it's, 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 like, it's like me with a video game back in the day. I had one guy tell me, Isaac, you're not a real gamer. Book. Right. Well, That's dad, boring. Well, I, had one, I had a guy come tell me one day. He said, Isaac, you're not a real gamer. I was like, what you mean I'm not a real gamer? He said, you only play one game at a time, and you take forever to play that. I'm like, yeah, I absorb it. And the, the, and the fact is, I just don't have time to play video games. Hey, so hey, I got all the time in the world to read. That's why I read so many books. Hey, <laughs> that's his favorite hobby, I'll tell you. He's... he's Learning new hobbies, but that's his favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, every single book is like a new hobby for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's every single one's another adventure. And, and, and then so, on top of that, so he's got all of them yeah. going on at once. And then, and then I started another hobby. Yeah, hour. painting. It's a very fulfilling life. <laughs> <laughs> He, Bowen, he, Bowen can do that though. Bowen don't have kids. I don't have kids, and I don't have a wife to yeah. spoil everything I do. So you just so, spoil yourself. I just spoil yeah. myself. Yeah, and love yourself. Hey, 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 you know what? Actually, Aubrey, what I did today, I ministered to you today, didn't I? You sure did. Out of the book you read. Out reading. of the book I was reading, you see? Uh-huh. You see? I yep. was helping Aubrey out. And I reciprocated. But, and see, that's why. <laughs> Uh, well, I was reading the book too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was and Aubrey, the Aubrey was reading the book to I me was too. Reading, uh, uh, the Three Little Pigs. Hey, can you guess? Can you guess? It's a book about family. Hey, and it's a good oh, book, though. It yeah. is. It's a. Anyway, Three Little Pigs can be family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It could be. <laughs> I, but I'm going to say this one. So I got a question. Walking in your house, is it like a library where you're like, Shh. Oh, it, it, it's a library. Uh, if you walk in my kitchen, that's nothing but a library. It's not quiet. It's, it's not, not quiet. quiet. No, it's not. Okay, Bowen was doing like he's doing study day. <laughs> but anyway. I read, read, I read all day today until I came over here. Yep. And, and then on top of that, he wants to be our next uh, Michelangelo. He's trying to, yeah, he's going to hey, paint. I already <laughs> had my first picture I've ever painted hanging in the bathroom. Oh. Signed and everything. Yeah. Signed and everything. Oh, yeah. Dated and all. And, and listen, Bo, you know, making a stick of a little man or a little head. Oh, that hey, don't Arby, that wasn't a stick of a little man, was it? Was it, Arby? You no, see? it was no. a field and the sky and the trees. Really? And, and a, a cave. big black thing sitting in the <laughs> <A laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> We <laughs> trying to figure it out. It looks like a big black bear, <laughs> a, a sleeping giant, maybe a sleeping yeah. giant. Hey, hey, when we went to Hobby Lobby, yeah. there one lady in front of us, and she said, "You gonna be a painter? I'm so happy for you. I really think you're gonna do a good job." I said, "Yeah, he's gonna work millions when he's dead." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might take a little while. Where, 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 where they don't know what is hey, to change. Hey, yeah. that is black lady. I was talking to her, and I don't know what it was. But anyhow, she said, oh, she said, you got a paint? She said, bring me your first one. I said, in 10 years. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's like, I'll be dead. I'm, I'm already dead. Old. Old. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Anyway, look for Bowen's art coming up in the near future. Look for, my, look for the art that I do. You might love it, too. For, hey, if they can now. figure out what it is, hey, I was yeah. about to say it's gonna be one of them pictures when they look at it they're like, man, I wonder what the what the artist was doing. I'll be on the other side. Frustration. Can you yeah. get the picture? <laughs> can you not tell? We got a, we got a different type of art today. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. It's frustration and strange situations. Hey, oh. hey, I was watching Three Stooges one day. And the guy, a curly, was showing the old oh, guy he was painting. He says, "This is a woman with a, a twisting a clock." And he says, "This is Poey." He said, "Poey, this is where a fortune when I'm dead." <laughs> he said, "I'll kill you now. Find out." <laughs> I could be bored. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. All right. So That's for the past two weeks, we took a break on our series, <laughs> "The Struggle Between Law and Grace," and we're coming back with it this week. Uh, the oh, last yeah. two weeks were pretty good uh, interviews. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We had uh, Brother Carrie and Sister Erica here last week talking about their trip to Pakistan. Mm. And then um, then we went ahead the week before, had Brother Kennedy and Sister Pam come and talk to us about Mexico and their distributing of Bibles out there, uh, all provided by blessing. Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. Yes. And um, mm. if you donate to the Bible Thon, or the share that's helping out a good ministry out there. Please continue to do so. Uh, I used to work the share and the Bible thons when I worked at Brother Swaggart's. And uh, there are blessings. Some people You get some people that are real pricks. Uh, like I had one guy uh, just go off the rails and be like, ah, 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 Jimmy Swaggart isn't. You get some people like that, but the majority of people are praying. They're asking the Lord for help. Hmm. Um, they want uh, They lo- want the Lord to touch them. And um, and then they donate to the ministry out there, so that does help out with the Bibles mm. and all that good stuff. So keep that going on and help Brother Kennedy and uh, Brother Carrie and Sister Erica and Sister Pam as they do this mission work throughout the world. It's a it's a blessing to see this. And guys, we we have a good going back to our topic though. We're talking about the the subject between law and grace, and we're going to start back on Romans chapter seven, where seven verses one. To uh, to six, uh, Paul was talking about how we're released from the law and that we're not under the law no more. And he used an example of marriage, how if a, a man and a woman is married, as long as they're married, they're bound by that covenant of marriage mm. until one dies. And when one uh, one of the spouse dies, uh, that they're broken away from. They don't have to follow that law no more. They're broken from the law of marriage. And Paul was basically saying, since we are Christians. We go ahead and we have that freedom because we died to sin. We died to the law. Now we are saved and we are alive unto him. Mm -hmm. So that was what Paul was talking. Now Paul's moving into another direction. Um, Different Bibles say different things. Uh, This Bible says the law and sin, the struggle against sin on the expositor's Bible. And the ESV says, uh, well, the, the New King James says sin's advantage in the law. Mine says Moses' law reveals sin. So, oh, wow. so, so we have a lot of different 
a different um, um, titles. And titles, you could say. Uh, basically, tonight we're going to deal with something called legal legalism. That's mm-hmm. going to be something we're going to dive into. But um, this is the this is this, I, I want to say right here in studying this for the day with the group today. Um, this this passage of scripture probably is the meat of this this title, the struggle between law and grace, because. We're, now we're starting getting to the weeds of it. Um, we know we everybody says we're saved by grace and that we're not under the law. But there's there's certain group of people out there that believe that we are we still have to follow the law to be holy and to be acceptable into God's uh, God's world and God's and goes to make it to heaven. But we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. And as always, we're going to ask Brother Aubrey to read. We're going to be reading Romans chapter seven, hmm. verse seven to verse twelve. All right, I'll gladly take it away. So here we go. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good." All right, guys, so as we start off, let's start from the beginning. Uh, the question that is raised up in the Paul's mind right now is that a lot of people are hearing this, that the first part, Paul's saying we're not under the law. Mm-hmm. We're under grace. We're under a new covenant. And it did raise the question, well, if the law is, is all, if we're not under the law, is the law sin? People could have asked that question, and Paul did. Paul said, what then? Shall we say? And you got to remember, Paul. Uh, Paul from verse one and six was talking about how a believer is no longer in, no longer under the law. But the remainder of this chapter shows that a believer putting himself under the law, it, it thus failing to avail himself to the resources of grace, he is a defeated Christian. So what Paul is basically saying is now that look, we're not under the law. But if mm-hmm. you put, if you go anything other. Then mm-hmm. the cross of Christ and the, or live under grace, you're going to be a defeated Christian. Mm. And this is why he said, "Is the law sin? God forbid! For no, for no, of no, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law has said, you shall not covet.' Mm-hmm. So, what was the purpose of the law? We've been talking about the law and grace. The law in itself isn't bad. Right? Thou shalt right. not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That yeah. Also, so the whenever. Things, Whenever God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, it was a gift to the nation. Right, right. And we're going to read later on the text how this was supposed to be a law of life. Mm. And, and, and uh, Paul took it as a law of death, but he, and he explains himself later on. But basically like this, the law is there to show you what sin is. Mm. Um, prime example of this, and I heard a, a few of the, uh, the commentators quoted like this. Um, the law is like a 55 miles an hour stop sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a stop sign, a speed limit. Mm-hmm. Now, we know Bowen don't do that anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no, no. But the law, uh, there's mm-hmm. a post-it sign that says 55 miles per hour. I do 90. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, if any cops are listening out here, just ignore it. <laughs> don't, let, don't let Brother James catch you in Henderson. <laughs> but so going on to that note, though. That Confession sign, is good for the soul, they say. <laughs> I repent. <laughs> <laughs> but so 55 miles an hour sign is posted on the interstate mm-hmm. and you going 90, as Baldwin says he does. Mm-hmm. Well, a cop stops him and asks, hey, do you, did you not see that sign back there? See, that gave the cop the authority <laughs> to say, listen, that was wrong. You shouldn't have mm-hmm. went 90 miles an hour yeah, on a road. Yeah, yeah, comparing your actions to what was already set as a standard. Right, right. And you, you've seen the sign. Yeah. So that's what the law does. The law goes ahead and says, this is sin. Mm-hmm. And if you do it, well, you're, not, you're held accountable now mm-hmm. for that transgression you did. 
So that's what Paul was saying. Paul said, no, it, um, when they asked, is, uh, is, sin, is the law sin? That's why, Mo, uh, that's why Paul said, God forbid, or some translation says, by no means, or certainly not. Because Paul was putting that emphasis, no, the law mm. is not sin. The law was placed there for a purpose to show us what sin was. And look, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm glad the Ten Commandments is there. I'm glad that the Levitical law was there. And we, now the sacramental parts of it, that's gone away. According to uh, Corinthian, uh, Colossians, that those are sacramental uh, law. That's, that's, that's stuff that we don't have to practice. But um, it, it goes to the point of like asking an evolutionist when they say, well, this, all, this thing came from nothing. It just came from a little period that exploded mm -hmm. four point some billion years ago. And you ask them, well, how do we have morality? What, who determines what's right and wrong? Mm -hmm. That is God's standard. That is God's standard of the law. The law was there to show us that we could not fulfill it. But we're, I'm glad it's there because I'm, I'm glad that I know it's wrong to steal. I know it's, it's wrong to covet. I'm glad that's there because it shows us the moral standard of God and how holy he is. Yeah. Not only does it show us when we're doing something that will bring us to death, but it's also a basis to raise our children on. If we want them to to walk in life, yeah, and that that's that's what we that's what, like I said we're glad we have it, yeah, because because you know like I said who, who where's the moral standard that we live by, Boog and bro, and you have anything you want to add to that? Oh, the thing I want to say about studying this is amazing how it's actually broke up into two parts. Really, you think about it. The first part, I believe, Pastor Paul was saying like, hey, the law is good because I believe there's a speculation. By some scholars, the reason why he wrote chapter seven, because in verse six he was talking about how you saved by grace. You know, he was talking about how sin should have dominion over you and stuff like that. And some people think that Paul was pretty much trying to say, like some people took Paul wrong, like to say, well, uh, you know, uh, we don't have to live by the law, or we don't need the Ten Commandments. And that's why I believe the Holy Spirit allowed him to write this. To let the people, because you notice in a few times as we're going to read on, he's going to say the law is good. The law is not bad. So fortunately, there were some in the Christian community that was thinking maybe the law was bad or we didn't need it no more or it was not necessary. Hmm. And Paul's letting them know, are you, you know, you are, do need the you law. Even, you even yeah. have some people saying, mm -hmm. oh, Paul's saying the law is sin. How the I can't uh, believe Paul's right. saying that. That too, yeah. There's some people could have took that wrong as well in that area as well. So it can only both ways. I'm glad you mentioned it. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but, uh, yeah, go ahead. So so, so mm -hmm. moving on to verse 8, we established that Paul is saying, look, mm -hmm. I'm glad that that the law is there. The law showed us what sin was. But then we go on to verse 8, says, but sin, or the sin nature, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manners of con Conversation, which is meaning an evil spirit. ESV said, uh, not evil, uh, evil desires. Uh, I like how ESV says it in verse 8, but sin, seizing the opportunity through the commandments, producing me all kind of covetousness, for mm. apart the law, sin lies dead. Mm. So so what, what was happening with Paul said, but sin, what, what, what it is, sin used the, the law. And we can also read, let me go ahead and read verse 9 as well, where it says, uh, for I was alive without law once, but when the commandments came, sin revived and I died. And mm -hmm. the commandment which was ordained to life, I found it to be unto death. Taking a K, uh, found it unto death. So that's, I read for, from uh, from eight to the to ten because I think there's a lot of content right there, basically saying, look, by by sin, but sin seizing the opportunity when when we knew when we knew what was wrong. When we knew what the, the law, we said the law reveals sin. The law just didn't reveal sin. It it irritated the sin nature hmm. that something told us you cannot do this certain thing. Hmm. Yeah, it's and, the rebellious nature. It's the rebellious nature. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's, it, and that's what really you think about it. The sin nature is a lot of people, and mm -hmm. we haven't delved into the sin nature uh, on this podcast yet, and we were planning to go for a while now. The, the sin nature is what is sin? Sin is rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. And that, that rather, and the sin nature, when, when, you, when you activate God's law, when God says you cannot do this, mm -hmm. and if, you're not, if you don't have your faith based in what Christ did at the cross, it goes ahead and it 
it, it activates. It says, mm -hmm. well, you saying I can't do some, I'm going to do it. That's and it's a you. Yeah, just mm -hmm. to show you that I can do it. And mm -hmm. that's what Paul yeah. was facing here in verse 8 when he said, but sin, seizing the opportunity through the commandment, producing me all kind of covenants, for apart from the law, sin lies dead. So what Paul's saying in that part right there, saying, listen, before I was saved, Mm -hmm. Or better yet, not even before I was saved, but Paul saying, you know, while I was a new Christian, I had this unique fellowship with Jesus. I, I trusted him. I loved him until somebody brought back up the law. There's there's theories out of this was before Paul was saved. This is while Paul was living in his uh, before he was a Christian. I believe this probably was after he was a Christian. Um, and, and Paul was saying, I had this relationship and we all experienced that. If you remember coming back to the Lord or coming to the Lord, it was, how can I say this? It was, you, you had a newness of life. Mm -hmm. You felt regenerated. As Romans chapter 6 said, you felt alive in Christ. You felt like you, you wanted to serve him all throughout the law. But when you start studying God's word, and you, well, God says, do not steal, do not kill, do not bear false witness. And you start looking into the attitude and the laws of God, you start thinking, well, hold on. I need to do this to keep my salvation, which puts it into a works perspective. Mm -hmm. And you start saying, well, now that I have to follow this, as Paul said in the end of verse eight, far apart from the law, sin lies dead saying, look, when I didn't, when I had, when I didn't know the law fully, mm -hmm. I was alive. But when, but he said, I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandments came, it came, sin came alive and I died, not died physically, but he was saying spiritually, mm -hmm. he lost that connection mm -hmm. and he was more focusing on the law aspect. And guess what? Sin reared his rear, it read, uh, really? sin reared up to his ugly head. Mm hmm. And guess what? The temptation started to come. And you, well, I can't do this because I'm going to sin. And then when you fall, you fall into combination. And, and it sounds like Paul was getting kind of frustrated at that time, though he was right. Because he's like, hey, I tried the law. I tried. And again, mm -hmm. you got me frustrated. You know, every time I had a sin desire, every time I'm like, hey, I finally got this thing figured out or I got mm -hmm. it conquered. Then it comes right back and it falls me back down on the ground again. Yeah. So I have a picture that comes to mind whenever uh, we read the verse 8 for without the law sin was dead so i think of a a kid who's just exploring in the kitchen and mm -hmm. um just living mm -hmm. just exploring right right seeking out the things that it finds interesting and the mom's cooking or dad's cooking and and the stove is hot mm -hmm. and the baby goes close to the stove and the mom uh, says uh -huh. don't touch uh-huh but that curiosity. That, that kid was just living, <laughs> being yeah. curious, exploring. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But then whenever the rule was placed before him, mm -hmm. then immediately the kid's like, oh, uh -huh. I think I want to touch it. Well, it's the same uh -huh. example me and Booga was yeah. talking about mm -hmm. with wet paint. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> when a cameraman Hezekiah knows about that. He's a painter. Put a wet paint sign on something. Uh -huh. <laughs> just uh -huh. put it up. And I bet nine out of ten, you come back, there's going to be a handprint. <laughs> gonna be. And look, we've done it here, too. We, we paint our dump trucks. And we like we paint them like, hey, don't touch it. It's wet paint. And we turn, oh, I got paint on me. How? I touched it? <laughs> right. That's right. how, that's how this, this desire is. Like you said. Nine out of ten, if you wouldn't put a wet paint sign there, nobody would touch it. Mm -hmm. But because you put the wet paint sign, and that's how the Word of God is a lot of times with, mm -hmm. with, with mm -hmm. people. And mm -hmm. I used that same example earlier in prep. Mm -hmm. How many times you get a, a person that is not saved, mm -hmm. and you let them know, hey, God, God says something is wrong. Nine out of ten, they're going to go ahead and do it because a Christian laid down God's law. Mm. Or says something about God's law that they they like. Well, we're just gonna show God what what we're gonna do. Yeah, and and that that goes to a point that you know it that's that's the sin nature inside of us, mm. and that's the thing when you when you're trying to dormant the sin nature by the law or say I'm gonna do certain things in my life to to overcome and look i'm not i'm not going to advocate here that we're not we don't we feel you should follow god's law but we right, feel here right. because you love jesus and you serve him and you put your full faith and trust in him and say lord help me to overcome this sin that's how you're going to overcome sin not by you following a certain set of laws right. or you being legalistic and saying well i can't watch this or i can't do that and you should watch what you right we, we're right. here There's we talk about harry potter we talk about other things there is a balance yes yes but at the same time you shouldn't 
focus on your legalistic legalism and say, well, that's going to make me the he- that's going to give me the heaven. No, nine out of ten, you're going to fall. You're, you're going to be a defeated Christian because you're not going to have no joy, no peace, no long suffering because mm-hmm. you are trying to serve Christ mm-hmm. or live in Christ under law and instead right. of under the grace and freedom mm-hmm. that God puts you in. Well, and another yeah. thing too, when it comes to salvation or sanctification. You know, you cannot depend on the law of Moses or any man's work, right? You know, because a lot of people think Paul's just talking just about the law of Moses. You know, it's any man-made law. It's any man structure, you know, kind of similar to the law of Moses. Anytime you have an organization that believes in good works, that's what they're doing, you know. They're making a law, you know. One time I was watching on a, a video called Roman Catholicism in Crisis, and in the documentary they were interviewing, uh, I think, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York and they were interviewing some Roman Catholics and they were asking them, how do you think you're going to get to heaven? And some of them said, well, just being by a good Catholic and following the sacraments. And some even said, and I heard it myself, some said, I, I, you know, if you follow the Ten Commandments, I think you go to heaven, you'd be okay. You know, uh, you can't go wrong with the Ten Commandments. So there is a group of people out there who just think, you know, if I just follow the Ten Commandments, that, and I don't drink or don't smoke, and we're not against, you know, we are against that stuff. But some people think if I just don't drink or I just don't smoke or follow Ten Commandments, I go to heaven. And Paul's saying, no, you're not going to go to he- get to heaven by these things. You know, it's through Christ we, and the we, cross. We live under yeah. a higher standard. We right. live under the standard mm-hmm. of grace. Right, right. The, the Ten Commandments, we follow the Ten mm-hmm. Commandments not because we have to. It's because mm-hmm. we have the love of Christ and the grace of mm-hmm. his, his sacrifice in our heart. Mm-hmm. And look, Jesus said it the best way. He said, if you mm-hmm. love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Right, right. And right. I remember having a debate with somebody one time, and they told me that, oh, Isaac, you're trying to save all we do, follow Jesus and love him. We're not going to sin. Mm-hmm. It, I'm not going to say we're not going to sin but at the same time it's a lot easier not to sin right it helps yeah. Instead you're, not, of us, you're not focusing on what you shouldn't do but rather just following what well it goes to the point like the this Lord it goes to the point like this why should i look to the law instead of looking to the one that created that law right mm. right you know right. And, and look i know it brought out a lot of controversy but it made a good point in the movie the chosen yeah when one of the religious leaders looked at jesus and i watched the chosen so if you don't like me i'm sorry <laughs> but i watched i watched the chosen and that, that part when he was talking to that religious leader and that religious leader told him he blasphemed and he said jesus if you don't recant mm-hmm. we're gonna prosecute you to the full extent of the law and jesus said in that part i am the law of moses was that wow. in the bible no but it made yeah. a good point on that they were trying to accuse Christ on a on a law that they went ahead that he went ahead and established. Right now, and then, and then some laws that they they made they added, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that that was the thing. Christ created this law, mm-hmm. but and the law was there. I'm gonna make a point with this before y'all say, oh, because there's some people out there said that Mormons believe this. No, Christ created because Christ is God mm-hmm. created the law. The law was there to show people what sin was mm-hmm. and to show them that they could not obtain the law. They right. could not fulfill the law on their own merits. That's why they had to look to a coming Savior mm-hmm. to fulfill the law and to mm-hmm. fulfill everything that they went ahead, that everything that was in the law. Yeah. And so, you had to look at Christ. Mm. So the law doesn't just tell you what you should do and what you should not do, but it also points you to why. Yeah, well, and that that's mm-hmm. why if you uh, read later on, mm-hmm. um, uh, where is it at? I think verse uh, 14, for we, uh, no, 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 uh, verse 13 of Romans 7, what then, which is good made debt unto me, God forbid, but sin that might appear, uh, but sin that it, that it might appear sin, working debt by what was, which is good. Uh, Paul was saying in that, that phrase right there, that the law is good. The law is the law is, is has a purpose. The law is there to prove the the way to Christ, and mm. it's good. But sin, the sin nature inside of us, uses that for bad. Sin will keep us down in the in the law. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the, well, if the law says do not steal, um, and you go steal something, that is the sin nature inside of you, mm-hmm. and that has to be dormant by the love of Christ and the grace of Christ. But if that sin nature isn't taken care of, mm-hmm. well, you're, you're going to sin. Mm-hmm. You're going to go ahead. And look, why do you think there's so many crooks out there? Because they say, hey, it's against the law to steal other man's stuff. Well, guess what? We don't want to work, so we're going to go ahead and steal it because that's, the, that's supposedly the easiest way to go. 
Mm. But but the law the law itself mm. is good. The law says, look, this is God's standards. This is wrong. We shouldn't do that. But unfortunately, sin says sin's in a rebellious state, as we mm. talked about earlier. Yeah. You're in a if you're in a, if you're living in a sin nature, you're in a rebellious state, and you're not going to serve Christ. You're not going to go ahead and follow Him, and you're going to go ahead and break His law. Right. So well, this is the thing about the Ten Commandments. People got to realize it, it makes it clear. It's like a mirror. It was to show you what is wrong with you. It couldn't help you. It's not a gate. Right, right. It's a, it's a right. It's it. It's, it's like, for example, I like to use this, for example. It's like if you're waking up in the morning and you're like, and you see that you're all messed up, you know, the mirror is not going to have hands and have uh, mm. fingers. And if it does, I mean, you better get out of that house. You're smoking something. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Who's, Who's the, the fairest of them all? Sure not you, babe. <laughs> 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 anyway, I, I'm sorry, folks. We had to say that anyway. But no, but anyway, you're not, not going to have hands and fingers like, hey, I'm going to set you up today. That's not going to happen. Mm. So, but you know, you have toothpaste. You have, the, you have the brush. You have everything that can help you fix your problem so that's the cross that's jesus christ and him crucified you know he's the toothpaste and that's in the the brush or whatever that's what's gonna in the water that's really what's gonna solve your problem so a lot of people they look into the mirror the law or good works of any type they're thinking that's gonna be their salvation and that's gonna solve their problem but really it's the cross that's right there the Mm -hmm. toothpaste that's gonna solve your problem I, i don't know that's maybe a lousy you know, yeah, uh, uh, well, thing, but I'll, I'll continue with that. So yeah. the the law, the law is the mirror. It shows uh-huh. you that you got mud on your face, right? Right. But right. then Christ is the sponge. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the way to remove it. Exactly. Yeah, and they're thinking their he's mirror the is cl- going to remove it, and it's not. You know, the cleanser. Yeah, the cleanser is going to do it. That's a good, not a good thing. Yeah. So yeah. got my back. I appreciate it. <laughs> so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take our uh, halfway point break. We'll be back in a few moments. So stay tuned. Hi everyone. My name is Anthony James Hayes. You probably know me from Best from Brothers to Searching. And I'm so honored today that you meet me here. I want to talk about a little bit about my book. The first one I wrote was Journey of the Christians, From Dead Works to Living Faith, my very first book. It's about the story about me pretty much going through things and how I overcome by the Word of God. And here is The New Kingdom with Liberty Man and Evil Stone. That's my second best book so far. And I want to take a little time to tell you about my second book mostly. The first one is about some children. They go to like an adventure. They go to see a new kingdom. The future, I guess you can say, of God and how he's going to restore the kingdom to Garden of Eden conditions. And they fight good and evil and light and darkness. So I encourage you to actually get these books. They're available on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. And then my second story, Liberty Man, a man who fights for freedom. And he takes off the chains of tyranny, of the kings of tyranny off of him. So he finally gets free, and I hope you find out his journey and how he got free and so on. And then my third book, The Evil Stone, a man who actually turned to the devil, or he sold his soul to the devil for a powerful magic stone. And he had the promise of ruling the world. So I hope you enjoy these books. They're available. And they're family friendly and they're something you can learn with the Word of God. They're parables that you can teach your children and your grandchildren about. So I encourage you today to go to these places and I hope you bless and you enjoy these books. All right, everybody, welcome back to the second segment of Brothers Just Searching. So, guys, we were talking about how the law was that showed us what was sin Mm -hmm. and how the sin nature plays a big role into us committing sins as believers but i I do want to make a point before we go on Hmm. you know a lot of people will say how do we overcome the sin nature how do we how do we overcome you know the desires of the temptations that the devil um brings about because on a different on this note um you know a lot of a lot of men are addicted to porn or a lot of men Mm -hmm. are addicted to Mm -hmm. certain things uh drug addictions and all and they know it's wrong. You, you never, mm-hmm. you never come up to a guy and he say, "Well, some of them, go, oh, I like it," you know. But there's a lot of pe- a lot of men say, or a lot of people that do drugs and stuff. They say, "Well, I know it's wrong, but I just can't stop." Mm. One, and going back to our example before, the law says, "Hey, that's wrong," mm-hmm. and it's it's funny how they know it's wrong, mm. but they still want to do it that just shows how powerful mm-hmm. 
the sin nature is in a lot of unbelievers. Mm. But it, as a Christian, a, we shouldn't, I'm trying to say this right, we shouldn't have that problem. Okay, and I'm not preaching sinless perfection because if you listen to any amount of this episode, you already know I'm not for that. Mm. I believe a Christian can fall into sin. It's just what are they looking to? Because even a lot of Christians mm. that have the law of grace, I guess you could say, well, I have grace. I could do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Know that certain things are wrong and they still want to do them. Mm-hmm. Is that sin nature inside of you? And the only way, the only way to overcome that desire of sin or that the evil desires, as verse 8 was says, with that big, long word that I'm not even going to try back no more. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> how do we overcome that? And that that's a question I think a lot of people should be asking because the next couple of verses still line up with what we're talking about, how sin uses the opportunity Okay, it goes back into verse 11. Well, I'm going to read verse 10 first. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me, saying, look, they put a bondage on me because I tried to do it on my own. And then it says, for sin, seizing the opportunity through the commandments, deceived me and through it killed me or basically, hey, hurt me or uh, wounded me. So the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. So... If you read that sin, seizing that opportunity, and that is Paul is a believer here. Mm-hmm. Paul was a believer when he wrote this. I believe he went through this before he was revealed the revelation of Jesus Christ and the cross. But it sin seizes that opportunity. How do you overcome that? How do you overcome that sin that or that 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 addiction or that 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 lustful problem? How do you overcome that? By any other means except Christ and the cross, right? There's none, right. right? Well, you got to realize too when you put your faith in what Christ did at the cross, that and in the promises of God on top of that, that opens the door for the Holy Spirit to work in you to give you the strength to live. You know, it's kind of like you know all the great men of the Bible, Samson, David. I mean, they all needed supernatural providence of God to do what they needed to do. Moses, all of them. So you look at those men, that's how you do it, you know. You rely on the same Holy Spirit and the truth of God that gave them the strength to overcome their enemies. So that's how you do it. And there's some days where, there's some days where even if you, you know, you don't have the magic bullet. And I don't like to say that, the magic bullet. But the thing is, you know, but that's the way to do it, you know. Bo, well, you had a brainstorming opportunity yeah, right there. What go you ahead, got, man? Go ahead, let, let it out. Into the mic, into the mic, boy. Into the mic. Listen to this, all right? I want to read this to you. Uh, that's why I've been quiet, man. I've been looking. Um, for all who relate on works, rely on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by the, all the things written in the book of the law and do them all right what i want to look at curse everyone that curse uh, for all who apply works of the law are under a curse for it is written everyone that lives according to the law mm-hmm. anybody that lives under the law and does not live by faith Is under a curse. You know, why would people want to live under the law and be under a curse? Um, let me see. I had found another one that I wanted to read. Because we can't fulfill the law. No, no. If we try to live by it, we'll keep on failing. Right. Only only Jesus could live by the law because he right. fulfilled the law. That's right. He was the only completely. Perfect. He's the only perfect one. In the, he, he gives us the strength. He has the strength. He's the only one who can have the strength to do it and give us the mm-hmm. strength to do it. But, you know, Bowen brought a good point right there, a mm-hmm. curse. Now, I'm mm-hmm. not saying that people that believe and follow the law are cursed because mm-hmm. I believe there's a lot of good Bible-believing Christians that are out there that that hold on to that and they're saved. I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. doubt that. But what is that curse that you're talking about right there, Bowen? Because mm-hmm. I, I honestly think it's a curse uh, uh, 
that is you're not going to have the fullness of Christ. You're not going to live in the freedom okay, I'm of all, Christ. I'm, I'm going to read another one that I got right here, and this one, this one is much better. I think it's much better understanding. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law? Hmm. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law? Nope, did you depend Did you depend on the law to give you the Holy Spirit? You know, watch. Or by hearing with faith. Mm-hmm. Or by hearing hearing the word of God and building faith. Which one did you receive it from? You receive it by believing in Christ and hearing the word of God and letting your faith build up. Or did you receive it by the law that you were living by, thinking that you were right with God, but yet you're under the law and mm. sin is living in you? Mm. So mm. which one did you receive it from? Mm-hmm. You see, that's what you got to look at. Mm. You got to look at this. I was explaining this to Boogie earlier, and I want to share that with you and Aubrey. A person can be born again and, and come to Christ, and the Holy Spirit will move into his life, and he'll start living for Jesus. And I told this to Boogie. But after a while, that person gets to a point in his, in his walk, he feels like he has to do something else. Christ didn't do enough on the cross. Christ didn't pay the full price. Mm. So all that wickedness that was in his heart, all that stuff that was in his heart, what he did, he turned back to the law. He turned back to the elements that he used to do. He turned back to the things that he once did and said, well, I, I'm going to do this, and that's going to fulfill you know, what Jesus didn't do for him. Let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit moves into your heart, and he starts cleaning you out, and you go back to these things that you used to do, what you're doing, you're inviting one, and you're chasing the other one out. Mm. You see? Because the Holy Spirit will not live in a, in a heart that's full of sin. Mm. Okay? He will not do it. And a person that lives under the law and lives by the law, thinking that Jesus didn't pay the price for our sins, that the blood wasn't enough, that he didn't pay it, Mm-hmm. And he lives under the law. There's something wrong with that picture. Well, mm-hmm. let, let's go back to what Paul did, though. Paul, and look, we don't know when it is, but we know from this text that Paul did the exact same thing you're talking about. I know that. And look, this, and look uh, uh, Brother Swagger says it the best way if I can find it. He said, uh, Paul's refer, uh, for, for verse 9 in his commentary, Paul's referring to himself personally in his conver- uh, conversation, uh, conversion to Christ. The law, he said, has nothing to do with that conversation. Ned did it have anything to do with his life in Christ. But um, I'm trying to give. Let where, me ask you something. Can the law change your life? Well, well, it, well, it can, in a way, right or wrong. You get what I'm saying? Because. Because the law points you to sin. Yeah, the law does point you to sin. And the Ten Commandments does too. Well, but it goes to the point. Let me finish my point while I was saying earlier. If, and I can't find it. If Paul couldn't walk that life after the law, how much more can we? And no, we can't be, either. That's what I'm that's saying. What Paul, that's what Paul was doing. If it happened after his conversion, and he probably was in the uh, Tarsus at the time. Imagine Paul going through that and, try, and learning the sanctification That's process. Right. That's right. Because what he what he referred back to as a new Christian, did he go back to the law? Remember, this was a. He said, "I'm the Pharisees among the Pharisees." Well, of course, he was trained to go ahead and kill Christians. Well, no, 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 not necessarily. He was trained to take the head high, uh, high priest role. Okay, I think it was after Caiaphas or something. It, it, mm-hmm. Paul was Paul was very knowledgeable in the well, law. I know that. And Paul went back, and we even use a, a, a former pastor of ours. When he got saved, he told his wife the first thing they went to do, hey, we're going to go ahead and buy a statue of Mary. We're going to go ahead and do the sacraments. We're going to do the law because we're good Christians. They went back to what they knew. It was not right, Mm -hmm. but they went back and they had to realize that that even that part was not a law. That 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 was a law, but mm. they they need to, they couldn't follow after that old order no more because mm-hmm. that was not right. That's what happened, and Apostle I think that's Paul. what that's what happened to Apostle Paul. And Paul, you were saying that the the law just point to death. It does. It, it points. Well, the wages of sin is death. The law points to the sin. If you commit the sin, it goes to death. Mm. That's why Paul worded it the way he did in the scriptures right here, and, and that's where that's where we as believers have to make sure we don't get into that 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 place of saying well lord you know to live a holy and victorious life i'm going to keep the ten commandments mm. 
It's hey, not based on that. It's based you, on what you did with Christ and first you of said all, the Holy Spirit's inside of you. First of all, Sorry, neither, one of us, uh, neither one of us can keep the Ten Commandments. No, no. But when Christ moved in, we can keep the Ten Commandments because of Christ. He gives us the well, strength. You I, see? I wanna, Christ so, lives in you, so the Ten Commandments, you can't fulfill them. I wanted to mention something going further in what you were talking about earlier. earlier. So the, the law is uh, not... We, we don't receive life through the Holy Spirit by um, an achievement of passing the test of the law. We, uh, we get judged by the law. You'll be judged then, by the law if you live by the law. And then the life in the Holy Spirit is a gift, and it's not an achievement. You can't achieve life in the Holy Spirit by passing a test of the law. But if you try to achieve life in the spirit by the test of the law, then you're always going to fail. Mm. Makes sense. Wow. Yeah. yeah and, and it goes, it goes because, because you're not, you're not, you're not, how can I say, I'm trying to say this in the right way to, 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 to add on to what you said. We, we don't, we don't have to earn the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a free gift. And I think this is why, and I know we weren't planning on going this route, but I think that's why being filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit is so important mm -hmm. because a lot of people say, well, the Holy Spirit is just there to speak in tongues. No, mm -mm. no, it's for you to live in, it's to help you to walk this lifestyle right. of salvation, not based on law or works. You, you know, a lot of people think of Christianity as this. It's a do's and don'ts. Oh, mm -hmm. you can't do this. You can do this. You can't do this. You can do this. But on the contrary, it's the reason we don't sin is because we, we put our full faith and trust in what Jesus did at the cross. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. And as you said, with the Holy Spirit, also the Holy Spirit, you walk it in the Holy Spirit. That's going to help you. The, the power of the Holy Ghost gives you power just not to fulfill your ministry, but to walk in the sanctification process. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Christians that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they're some of the most miserable people on the earth. Right. All because right. in their mind, it's, I have to fulfill the law on my own. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. so like Bowen said, though, it, unless you're in Christ and you have Christ in your heart, you don't, you, 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 you already fulfilled the law because Christ lives inside of you. We can go back to Romans chapter 6. When Romans chapter, when Jesus, when Paul, well, no, not even Romans chapter, verse seven, uh, chapter seven, the first part when he used the marriage analogy, we are dead to the law and we are made alive unto God. So we don't have to fulfill the law. We serve the one that already fulfilled the law. Now, do I smoke? Do I cuss? Do I drink? No, because I have the one that fulfilled the law inside of me and he helps me overcome sin by the blood of the lamb and the word of a testimony. Yeah, mm. and, and sin is what deceives us in, in making us think that we can live by the law. Well, it's based on people. The sin nature is a rebellious. We, we talked about that in the first segment. is a rebellious um, character inside mm. of us. And, yeah, because we, we also got a lot of pride. Remember, why, why does Satan fall? Pride. The pride. Mm. And if you look at the law, it's like, God said not to steal. Lord, I don't need your help on this. I don't... I, Right. Oh man, there's something nice right now. I want to steal it. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Or yeah. let, let's use Paul's analogy because Paul said covet. Mm -hmm. Some transactions says lust. Okay, you know, you, you walk on the street and you see this the uh, God reveals to you, hey, you can't lust at women. Your pride in you mm -hmm. is gonna say, hm, I don't need that. God, you don't need to help with this. I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna look at women like that. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten, sin brings an opportunity. Your way, and y if you rely on yourself, mm -hmm. mm. you are going to lust at that woman. Are you going to go ahead and commit that 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 sin that is has, has the opportunity? Mm. Why? Because the devil says, "Oh, he knows it's wrong," and if he does it, I get to I get to condemn him. And which I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead, mm. but there's uh, Romans eight verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Y if the devil knows you're walking after the flesh, because later on he says that as well, that uh, in verse, I think, 24, 
Uh, no, verse 23. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, being bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, verse 24, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus our Lord. So then uh, with the mind, I mind myself the law of God, but, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Saying, look, if I have the mind of God hmm. or I dwell on God, and I trust in him, I'm not going to want to do the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So if you know it's wrong and sin pops up, say, Lord, for, Lord, help me not to do this. You're not even going to notice. You're not even going to worry. And the devil's like, wait, he knows it's sin, but why didn't he do it? Ah, I got the mind of God, or I got mm -hmm. the mind of Christ Amen. At, uh, in that uh, verse 25, which goes into verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now those... Uh, no, now, there is therefore now no condemnation to those to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you're reading mm -hmm. content that scripture, because Paul just said, but with the flesh of the, uh, the the flesh, the law of sin, sin, the sin of law is the flesh. The flesh. My dad's good for that. He's probably gonna uh, get a kick out of what I'm saying. He says that this never got saved. Flesh mm -hmm. never got saved. Flesh. Mm -hmm. This flesh wants to sin. Mm -hmm. That's the sin nature inside of us. Mm -hmm. But if we have the mind of Christ mm -hmm. and we put Christ and we live in his grace, we're not going to want to sin. We're not going to want to go ahead or have the desire, have the desire to sin. That, that's the best way to put it. We won't have the desire. A mm -hmm. lot of people, when they know something's wrong, they have the desire to do it, to test it out. The, back to the analogy of the stove. <laughs> yep. you ever, the right. little kid right. probably wasn't worried about that. He got too yep. close and the mama said, oh, don't touch the stove, little Johnny. It's hot. The, the little Johnny's looking up. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, the same thing with what you were saying earlier. If uh, if it's the sin that tempts you to to look and to covet, and it's the pride that says, "Oh, well, that's that's not breaking mm -hmm. the law," mm -hmm. and that's and it's that sin that deceives you into doing something that otherwise the Holy Spirit wouldn't lead you to. Right, and if you and if you have the mind of the Spirit. You won't want to do it. You won't even have the desire to go for it because mm. you're like, something's inside of me telling me not to go there, so I'm not going to go there because you're heeding to the Spirit of God. And how does that happen? That happens by you being filled with the Spirit of the Lord inside of you and Him, he, He's directing you in every way, shape, and form. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, one time I was reading uh, Pilgrim's Progress and, uh, and I remember one part, this is a good analogy of the law and grace. You know, in the story, there was a guy who met up with Christian, and I think his name was Faithful, I think. Anyway, and he was like, he was, him and Christian was talking, and he was like, you know, how you been today? He says, well, I was on this journey just like you were, and then one part, I met Moses. And he said, Moses came down, started beating me, started punching me, and, and he said, but then Jesus came and stopped him. So, you know, and that's what people don't realize, that's, that's what the law now. is does. The law is not there to be your friend. It's not there. I mean, when you make one mistake, it's going to pound you down to the ground. You know, it got no mercy. It has no grace. I mean, think about it. The woman almost got stoned in the Bible. You know, when, when the Pharisees came to Jesus, said the law of Moses says we the, ought to stone her. But what you say, but that day grace saved her because mm. Jesus stepped in and said, whoever was sin among you, cast the first stone. Mm. So, and they realized, they dropped it. They're like, oh, wow, we're not perfect like we thought we were. And I didn't have plans to say that. That was the Holy Spirit. I didn't have plans to say that at all. It was amazing. But, mm -hmm. and they dropped it. And, you know, because they realized, oh, wow, we don't got it together. Jesus made them realize, you know, you should be stoned. Law the law yeah. condemns. Mm -hmm. Jesus saves. Exactly. Yeah, the exactly. law was going to be not only the end for her, but the mm -hmm. end for every single one of them. Exactly. And, look, and, and all of us. I, and I want to make yeah. sure mm -hmm. right here while mm -hmm. we're talking, though, I want to make sure our audience knows we are not condoning sin. Oh, no, 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 mom. We don't. No if means. a believer is saying, and we've covered this in the first uh, parts of this series, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if a Christian says, I can sin all I want because I problems. am under grace, mm -hmm. you are, 9 out of 10, you're not saved. Right, right. Because you're believing in something mm -hmm. called sloppy grace. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we're not going to sit here and say that you keeping certain rituals. Or dressing are you, a certain, are certain way. Yeah. yeah. Or saying, well, I'm not going to go do this, this, and this because 
uh, the, the the Ten Commandments says it. If you do that, you're putting yourself on the bondage. And you're putting that so, as your salvation. Yeah, you're putting that as your salvation. So, uh, look, I know a lot of people that say, oh, no, we're not. We trust in Jesus for our salvation. We just choose not to sin. Great. If that is your conviction, keep doing it. Mm-hmm. But the thing of it is, if you are saying, I'm going to keep the law mm-hmm. because, I, I, because I can go ahead and make it to heaven, you're wrong. Mm. It's not. We're not under the law. We're not under the old covenant. They, that's basically what the Mosaic law was. The right. old covenant, right? And I like how Brother Kerry said this the other day when we were talking to him in here. We're under a better covenant. We're under a covenant of grace. Think mm-hmm. about it like this: we have a higher standard because mm-hmm. we're saying we follow Christ. Mm-hmm. We are under grace. We we don't have a set of rules. We like Christ writes it on our heart. Now mm-hmm. we know what's wrong, and because you can go back to Romans chapter one when Romans uh, when uh. Paul brought out certain sins of the community. Mm -hmm. Paul brought out certain sins to Timothy that he had to correct in the church. Mm -hmm. There is certain things we have to do as believers that Mm -hmm. are a must. Mm -hmm. But the reason we don't do them is not because we're making it to heaven. We're already on our way to heaven. Mm -hmm. And we have the spirit of Christ. And that means we don't want to practice in sin. Well, well, like I said earlier, you know, I mean, I don't really repeat myself. But I think it's a good analogy to bring back again. Like there's some people I heard like, hey, we don't drink. And because they think because they just don't drink a beer or drink or don't smoke or don't commit a torture, like they're going to heaven because they did that. And I actually heard some Christians or some people say that, you know, like, oh, I don't do this. I'm pretty much there. We're going to heaven. And I was like, if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can you can be the cleanest undrunk person in the world. You can be keeping every deal, dot, tittle of every good deal you can make but if you don't put your faith in christ you're gonna go out of hell or you don't put well, your, you, you can go and, to hell as fast as I, that person and that I does i don't mean to keep mentioning brother right. eli but brother yeah. eli mm-hmm. has a powerful testimony he right. has been here on a couple of these series to talk mm-hmm. with us about this mm-hmm. if you look at if you look at brother eli's community that he was in mm-hmm. the amish have a lot of rules oh yeah the yeah. mormons have a lot of rules the right. jehovah's witness the jehovah you know the jehovah's witness can't have a flag they can't register to vote, right? Because it's, it's idolatry. Because it's idolatry. Oh, yeah. God says not to idol- uh, ha- ha- have any uh, idols. Any idols? Mm-hmm. They don't want to come see my my kids conservative <laughs> studio. Lord, mercy. <laughs> they have a heart attack. They're gonna right? have a heart attack. But but see <laughs> see that see they took that all, well that that that's right there showing that that's the law. That's, yeah, that is. Mm-hmm. Now you know how many Christians do that with Bible reading. Oh, I have to read my Bible because God told me to, and I have to read it to to make sure that I I'm saved. To make no, you read this because you are saved. You want to know your Creator. Mm-hmm. You want to know the one that saved you. You don't put this make. You don't make this a law, right? You right. don't make this something that you have to do. You want to do it because you love it. I look. I, every, I, I'm gonna ask you all that. Why do y'all read your Bible out of feeling? Oh, I have to read. Or see, no, I want to know my Creator. Right. No. Well, whenever I'm led to read the Word of God, I know mm-hmm. that the words that are in these pages are from the wonderful Counselor. And so whenever I open up this book, I know that I'm going to a counseling session that's going to end up for my good. And look, it ain't ain't always good either. I I gave that for my hurt. I I, I gave that testimony already uh, when I was in a dump truck, when I used to work for my former employer. I was reading the Bible and I had some anger in my heart. Do you know the scripture I came to say the only righteous, the only anger that you should have is righteous anger. And the Lord said, boy, you got mad the other day. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It hit mm-hmm. the heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It hit but the it's heart. counseling. Counseling it's, yes, doesn't it, it, always feel good. Yeah, it, it goes ahead and shows us that this this word ain't just a feel good thing. No, it's we, revealing. And that that's why you read it. You don't read it because this don't get you to heaven. Reading your Bible don't get you to heaven. It's it what you believe you the, in it. Yes, it's it's the one it, you believe the one that's inside of it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think as believers We shouldn't worry about, oh, do I have a certain set of laws I have to follow today? No, it's not based on it. It's based on what you did with Christ. And we're probably going to talk about this after because I think it's going to fit in. It's what James said. Mm -hmm. When you're saved, your works are going to change. Why? Because you have a new attitude in Christ. You are changed and you're you're not going to want to do the sin. You don't want to practice sin. Why? Because you know the perfect one that fulfilled the law. That's right. I have a, a quick little analogy about the law. So the law is like a light switch in a, in a dark basement. Whenever you turn the light switch on, it reveals all the roaches and the rats <laughs> scurrying around. Yeah, it's scattering. Yeah. It's scattering. But uh, if 
if uh, without the the light switch, you just wouldn't see the rats and the roaches. Right, right, right. right. So it's called a roach and rat philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Bone, you have anything else you want to say before we roll out, man? Because mm-hmm. you, you was on a roll earlier, man. Yeah. Now, now, now he ran out of gas. I ran out of gas. <laughs> I more gas in my tank. He went a short distance. <laughs> <laughs> He's all tired from reading all them books Aubrey said he reads. Well, I read all day long, bro. <laughs> yep. His brain's mush, like he likes to say. Yeah. <laughs> He's exhausted. So with that being said, I want to thank you for listening to this episode of Brothers Just Searching. Uh, please join us every week as we come here and study God's Word. And... Uh, Please, uh, please tell a friend, share it with your friends and family. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Scott Ford. I talked to him the other day and he said he listens to us every week. Oh, good. And I think he's encouraging him. So, Scott, thank you for uh, being a continued supporter of the program by listening. And uh, you can be like Scott, man. Go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube or tell Rumble others. now. We're mm-hmm. on Rumble. Uh, also on Apple, Google, Spotify, and many other platforms. Go check us out at Brothers Just Searching Podcast, uh, dot wordpress Dot com. And we're working on more platforms. Yes, we're working on more platforms. We have some things in the work that we're uh, we're praying about. And we're going to uh, hopefully make some announcements pretty soon if we continue and pursue with that. So, But with that being said, I'm Isaac Hayes along with Aubrey Box, Anthony Hayes, and Bowen Roban. Until next time, be Until blessed. Until next time. Until next time, be blessed, be encouraged. Remember, Jesus Christ is king and he's coming back. He's coming back soon, so don't be faint of heart because <laughs> Jesus has overcome the world. If you want to know Jesus, your personal Lord and Savior, reach out to us. We'll tell you how to make Jesus your Savior in heaven, your home. Until next time, be blessed.